just want to thank you for everyone uh, who's joining us tonight. We can have uh, everyone stand as we get ready to worship. And we just want to also welcome everyone who's watching us Facebook Live. We thank you so much. And we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to go ahead and open up with the word of prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we just come to you this night, Father. And we love you so much, Father. We glorify your name, Lord. Oh, Father, we want to be in your presence once again, Lord. That every day, Father, will be a day closer to you, Father. Lord Jesus, we just pray for everyone that is here tonight, God, that you would give us all strength, Father. Many have come in here after a long day of work, and they're weary and, and maybe hungry, Father. And But God, tonight you're going to refresh in us with your word, Father, with your spirit. And you're going to fill us, Father God, for, for we are hungry. And the word says, for uh, they that are hunger and thirst after righteousness sake shall be fed. And we thank you, Lord, because that's what we want tonight. We want to be fed with your word, Father God, your your love language to us, Father, your love letters, Father. I, I love your word, Father, and we just glorify your name, and, and you are glorious, Father, and we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout it out. 
Shout it out, shout it out, and we know He's good. Sing it out, sing it out, for the Lord is good. Shout it out loud, you are glorious. Yes, hallelujah. You are good, you 
is called at the cross in the book of Luke chapter 14 verse 27 it says and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me he cannot be my disciple I just want to share with you what I think about when I see the cross and what the what our, the holy God did for us when I see that cross, I see God's holy wrath and his holy love all in one. And many of us, we think that his wrath and his love is in opposition of each other, but really it isn't. It's a place of mercy and a place of justice all at the same time. He deserves our worship. When I think of that cross, I think of the struggle, the pain, the heartache. And many of us, we think we have it bad. He took on the heaviest burden any man could ever bear. Sing this song with me, church. Searched me, you know my way. Even when I fail you, I know you love me. You're Holy presence, 
church. Amen. You know, that's an awesome point you made about the cross, about where his wrath was poured out. It was poured out because he loved us. And he poured it out on his son. Our punishment. It's a good God. Amen. Thank you, worship team. You may be seated. Welcome, family, friends, and other. So we want to welcome you here today. We want to invite you to our third annual fashion show. Coming up, yes, come on. Give it up. It's at November 6th. Doors will open up at 5. Um, then you can kind of window shop and look. And then something you really like, you kind of hide it behind everything else so no one else sees it. So when it's time to shop, you can run right there and get it. At least that's what Sherry does. I don't know about the rest of you. but And it's really, it's, it's, it's a fundraiser for us, so the, for the worship team, so we can get some equipment and stuff. And it's a blast. It is a really good time. We just have fun. It's nothing serious. We'll have an auction. And if you've ever seen Shyla do an auction, it's a, it's a work of art. And I mean, she's a professional. 
So when you when you bid twenty bucks, it ends up costing you fifty. It's all for a good cause. Amen. She'll have you bidding against yourself, huh, James? Mm-hmm. Yep. So we need we do need help. So there's sign up sheets back on the on the welcome table back there. If you could sign up, it explains all the different things up there. Explains. Explains. All the different things that we need. So if you could please go back there. And uh, it's only $5 a ticket so that we're going to go on sale now. So give me all your $5 and I will give you all tickets. Amen. So please come. It's, it is it is a hoot. And it, we have some fun things planned for this one. Uh, children's Church is in need of volunteers. You need to see Annie. So I just want to do a little explaining. When you're going to help out with something, it's not like they sit there and say, okay, take on the kids, right? They're going to give you your lesson plan. There's going to be someone to shadow you. Someone's going to show you. So if we get enough of them, you only have to do it once a month, right? Or maybe once every two months if we get enough people. So you, they will make sure you are completely ready to go, okay? But we need your help in a lot of different areas. Youth night is this Friday night at 7 p.m., so if you want to dump your kids off and go part, I mean, if you want to have your kids come and learn about Jesus, drop them off, then you can go and have dinner, have a date night or whatever it is that you want to do. I just want to say, too, thank you, everybody who went to the uh, Laugh for Hope. We had a blast. It was a it was an awesome time. They had less people, quite a few less people than they did last year, but they made more money. So everybody who gave, I think. They made $65,000. It was $10,000 in expenses, so they, they, they netted $55,000. So thank you to everybody who gave. Thanks a lot for you who didn't. So maybe next year you guys can give. But it, is, it was such a good – I laughed so hard my face hurt, and I'm not exaggerating. If you didn't go, you really, really missed out. If you need a prayer card or a tithing envelope, raise your hand. Hi. All right, they're all good. So if our ushers would come forward, there are several ways to give to BCC. You can give to our ushers. They will take your money. You can also get to BreakthroughPeoria.com by downloading the Tithely app, or you can uh, mail it to the church. And the, um, that information will be on the screen, the address to do that if you, if you want to mail it. And we need you to be faithful. We really do. There's a lot of things going on. We got to get um, inspectors to come in here. We got to get uh, its permits. It's it's expensive, especially now. This construction world is going insane right now, and they want to charge you top dollar. So, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you so much that it is an honor for us to give into your kingdom, Lord. You said that if we give. It'll be given back to us, shaken down, pressed over, overflowing, Lord. And you asked us to test you in this, Father. And many of us have tested you in this and found you faithful, Lord. Help those, Father, who don't give, Father. Help them. And help those and bless those, Father, who do, Lord. We just ask you this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, well, thank you. Welcome, welcome, church. Hello. Welcome, church. Hello. Hi, Bobby. Amen. How are we doing tonight? Bless. I love you, Michelle. Bless. Yes. So I got to share this real quick. They were praying for me um, before service, and I came in, you know, the normal. You get, you know, I'm excited, but I'm nervous at the same time. And Brother Rich said, let her have fun. I don't think anyone's ever prayed that over me as I'm getting ready to speak the word. So I'm like, yes. And I don't know, during worship, it just that joy came, and I'm like, 
I'm excited. So we're going to have fun tonight. Um, I was telling Brother Marcos, my word is, I'm praying that it's an encouragement. It's not my usual, <clears throat> and I got to shut up Shiloh moments. And, but it's, I'm praying it's an encouraging word, and just the times that we're in right now, we need to hear God's love and his reminder. And I just feel like this is a word that God's given me, and um, I'm going to be speaking on God's workmanship. And it's funny because I literally have this written down. Tonight, I'm going to be discussing God's work of art. And he said that I was a work of art. And I'm like, I actually have that in my notes. So praise God. Confirmation. Um, <laughs> his character, his creation, um, and that's me and you. So if you can turn with me to Ephesians 2.10. For the sake of time, I'm just going to read it, and we're going to get into some prayer. For you, excuse me, <clears throat> for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that one, we are created for good works. We're created to do good, God. You have good intentions. You have the best for us, God. And if we can just step back, let go, and let you do what you created us to do, Father, what you want us to do, every single day of our lives, throughout our days, Father, that we would just be more and more like your son. That should be our heart's desire. So tonight, remove me, Lord. Speak to each and every single one of us, from the youngest to the oldest, tonight, Father, for the saved and unsaved. Lord, I just pray that you would have your way. Speak to your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And hello, Facebook family as well. Hello, hello. So Ephesians 2.10, and I want to point out three things that we're going to be talking about tonight. Being God's completed work, being created for good works, and then walking out your salvation. As we go back into Ephesians um, 2, and if you can put up verses 1 through 3 first here for me. Oh, hold on. I missed this far forward. 2 1 reads, And you made, and he made alive, and you he made alive who were dead in, trans and in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among, him, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. And Sister Michelle talked about, or Sister Angelique talked about that, God's wrath and his love and, and the cross. And that's exactly where we come from. We come from a world, and we're in a world that's full of that condemnation, that wrath of God. But we, as children, as children of God, we don't have to suffer that wrath. And so I'm going to just kind of point at the scriptures one through three. It says, we were low in our sin, which drags us down. We were dead in our sin, we were enslaved in our sin, and we were condemned in our sin. But if you continue on to verse 4, 4 through 7 reads, and you can put it on the board there. 4 through 7 is talking about with Christ, being set up with Christ, how he lifts us up. It says that he has made us alive with Christ, he's raised us up with Christ, and then we're seated in heavenly places with Christ. So one thing I'm wanting us to hear tonight is that when we call ourselves a new creation, we are with Christ. The new creation means that we are new. It does not mean that we are repaired sinners. No, we are new. That old is gone. Behold the new. So no excuses tonight. I want us to think about something that we might say, and we hear this often, that's just how I am. That's just how I was made. That's how I was born. Yes, but then John tells us that we must be born again. So tonight we're approaching this as we are those born-again Christians. We are those creations in Christ. We are the ones that have been lifted up, seated high, on the righteous right hand with the Father, Jesus Christ, because of what he did on the cross, that beautiful song, on the cross, right? We can lay it down, not to pick it back up, because we were not made to be repaired as sinners. God said he took that sin, our, his son at the cross, died for us, resurrected for us, so that we would be made new in Christ. So we have an excuse. There's no excuse to be picking up that old man, those dirty rags, to drag those things along and continue with the excuses of, that's just how I am. No, that's an excuse, period. 
That's what that is because we're saying we're new creations. We're not that born again sinner that continues to be a sinner. No, we need to choose today. And the word says for today, me and my house will serve the Lord. So I'm going to take that away. Today, Shyla will serve the Lord. And I'm hoping that we can evaluate our hearts tonight and say, can I say certain things? Can I say that one, I'm a born again Christian. Can I say that I have been born in Christ, raised with Christ, lifted high with Christ? Do I sit with Christ in the heavenly places? Can we say that today? We should be able to. As believers, no matter what Satan wants to tell us, our word tells us that we were born again. And I was looking through the scripture and I found where it talks about being born again. And it says being born again, there is a definition that talks about from above or from God. So the word again doesn't just mean over and over. So don't sin over and over. No. What that particular word in that scripture was talking about was actually you are born from above. You are born from God. So that sinful man is not of God, right? So we are not that old creation. We're the new creation in Christ. So continuing on, um, verses 8 and 9, which describe how the transformation um, of what we were and what we are now. And I'm going to read that one specifically. So 8 and 9 read, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Say that again. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. So I did nothing to deserve his amazing grace. I did nothing. He chose to allow me to live in this century. He chose to allow me to live in this time. He chose. He chose. God chose me. I did not choose him. He chose me, made me born again, so that I can live and do the works that he's called us to do. Saved by his amazing grace. I want us to ask ourselves tonight that hard question, am I truly saved? And we've heard messages over time, and pastor spoke a couple months ago on one, and knowing if you're really saved. I think the enemy likes to creep in and have us doubt that because we make mistakes. We do. We all fall short. We know what Romans says about that. We do all fall short, the glory of God. But we are saved by his grace, not for anything that we can do, but because of God's amazing grace, because of his mercy, we are his children that are saved. We need to get that before we can do anything else. Because what will happen is the enemy comes in and he likes to tell us that we're not. You messed up yesterday. You're going to mess up next Tuesday. So are you really saved? That's something that we should examine our hearts every single day. And there's going to be fruits to know that you are. And tonight we're going to talk about those fruits. Second Corinthians 517 reminds us that we are new creations in Christ. The old has passed and we are made new. As we turn back to the verse tonight on 210. For we are his workmanship. It says we are God's, we are God's workmanship. He has made us new. I was looking up the word workmanship, meaning something affected, made, or produced. It is used here to show God's completion. We are God's completed work. Not we are God's handy work, his crafted work, because that is used in different um, eras of the Bible. This particular verse is talking about God's finished product. We are God's finished product. What does that mean? I used to say this thing, and it kind of hurt me last week when I was looking at it. Uh, Steve Harvey has this thing where he says, don't trip, he ain't done with me yet. And I love it because that was the excuse for me. <laughs> Come and clean dirty. I would use that, don't trip, he ain't done with me yet. Y'all know, y'all know I'm a mess. And y'all know y'all hear me say it a lot. But in reality, I need to stop joking with that. Because I am his finished work. I am his work part and proud of it. I am his workmanship. I am the finished product. God says, this is what I've called you to be. But that verse in verse 10 says, now walk it out. Leah laughed at me when I told her the title of my message tonight, if you're taking notes. The title of my message is, now walk it out. And then Marcos asked if I wanted to play the song. I'm like, yes, play that song. You know, now nursery, walk it out. Children's church, walk it out. And I was going to do the whole dance, but no, the Lord said no. So moving on. We are his workmanship. We have been completed in Christ Jesus through the death and resurrection of, of uh, excuse me, of Christ Jesus positively affected our lives and made salvation possible. So again, the word workmanship, meaning affected, made, or produced. We were positively affected by what Jesus did for us. 
the the beating that he took, the blood that was shed. We talked about it this night tonight when we were singing our song, which I just that was awesome because that was God, you know. Ooh, 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 love that song. But we are his workmanship. We have been affected. God came in and changed my life for the better, right? And we hear people say, "Oh, he took us out of the um, out of the pit that we were in. He took us out of the mess that we were in." But then, do we go back to that mess? Do we go back to those things that Jesus Christ said, "Hey, I'm taking this cross for you." You are going to have to bear yours as well, though. And so when we bear our cross, what does that look like? Again, we're going to talk about that tonight. Next, the word said made. Workmanship meaning made. God then made us. So first, Jesus resurrected. That causes us to be positively affected. And then it says God made us new despite our sin and our transgressions through Christ. And then finally, the knowledge and acceptance. So we can say we know God. And pastor spoke a message sometime maybe a year and a half ago on the the word new. When Jesus or God says, step behind me if I never knew you, right? Depart from me. It's that intimacy. So, yes, half of the world, and I've been talking to a lot of people lately, and, oh, I know God. I don't know God the way you know God. I don't go to church every day, but I know God. I have a relationship with God. They get so offended. And the truth is they don't know God. And because I love them, I have no problem with having that conversation with them. Unapologetic, apologetically, I will have that conversation. Unashamed, I will say, the word does say if you know God, you're intimate with him. When's the last time you were intimate with your spouse? When's the last time that you even had an intimate relationship with your own children? What does that look like? Do you have that same relationship with God? You shouldn't. I love my girls, but I love my God more. That's healthy. That's where I should be. So when we hear people say, I know God, remember, is it that intimacy? Do we? Do I really know God? I sometimes think I don't know him at all. <laughs> and it's because, uh, Dush, Ali, you haven't been reading his word. You haven't been in his word. You haven't been still. Like I always say my favorite scripture, but have you been still in the presence of God? I love my time with my Shasha. I love my time with Leah. And I'm intentional with that time with my girls, but am I intentional with my time with my God? Not always. The knowledge and the acceptance. So not only do I know God, I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. So it goes beyond just saying, yes, I know he died on the cross. I wear the shirts. I got my shirts. I got even tattooed you know, on, my, on my body. No, no, no. Knowing God and accepting God has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with who he is and the holy of the holy of the holy of who he is. And then walking in that, walking in the obedience of his word. Jesus Christ says, you know me. If you know me, you love me. You will keep my commandments. But we want to keep our old ways, our old man. But yet we do love God. I promise tonight was going to be encouraging. Knowing God, once we say that we accept Jesus Christ, we know him and we accept him, we're going to see our life has been changed. We're not repaired sinners, as I said before, but we're new creations. The old has completely been removed, not covered by the blood, removed by the blood. There's a difference. I can go clean my room and cover all my stuff up. I throw it on on the bed and put a blanket over it. That's covered. Being clean is that I can flip up everything and anything can go wrong in my room and there is no sight of garbage and junk. That's being cleaned. So, no, we are not covered by the blood. We have been saved by the blood. We have been changed by the blood. We have been forgiven by the blood. We have been made new by the blood. That's it. Period. I'm not that old person, but I act like it sometimes. But God's word says, confess your sins to one another. That's my confession. I fall, I stumble. I do Shiloh's ways. I get impatient. I lack trust in God at times. But God in his mercy and his grace that is sufficient for me every single day, I have to wake up and start speaking that over my life. No more saying this is just Shiloh. No more saying don't trip because he ain't done with me yet. He is finished. I am his completed workmanship. I am his completed work of art. No excuses. I cannot continue to give myself that excuse. That's not of my God. The Bible talks about in Proverbs 26, 11, I ask us, why do we go back to the old man that drags along our filthy rags, or as the word says, being like a dog that returns to its vomit? We return to our sin, but why? So we've been made new, and when I, when I was writing that, I even said, but have we? 
So what now? Verse 10 says, God's workmanship, his masterpiece, his work of art, created in Christ Jesus for the purpose of doing good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them by the power of his, of his indwelling spirit. I believe that God has been reminding me and tonight, I'm hoping and praying that he does also remind you um, that we were created to walk in the good works of God. But we cannot do that without allowing the spirit of God to indwell in us. We know we say that often, I was nothing before God. I was a hot mess before God. I was this and I was that before God. But God. We can't occasionally walk in saying that we are children of God, depending on who we're with, who we're hanging out with, how holy we want to feel today. No, it's finished, Jesus said at the cross. But God said, I created you. I made you new. You're my completed work of art. A painter doesn't go back to something they sold to a museum and be like, oh, I didn't finish it. Let me put that one little last color in there. Hold on. No, it's finished. It's done. It's done. The cross is, it's finished. It's done. Right? But his resurrection is what we rejoice in. Because it didn't stay there. He rose. And then going back to what I read earlier, we rose with Jesus Christ. When he rose, we rose because we accepted him. That's the, that's the life that God has promised us in Jesus Christ. So tonight, we're going to, I'm going to ask us to do a couple things. I'm going to read a couple truths. And I want us to examine ourselves tonight. Um, asking our first, first and foremost, have you been born again? John 3, 1 through 8. And I'm going to read a portion of that. And Monica, if you guys want to put up 3-3 three, three for me. Thank you, Mama. I don't need it. John 3, 3. So this is where it talks about the new birth in the Bible. This is Nicodemus coming to Jesus and talking about um, being born again. And what does that mean to be born? Not the natural birth. Oh, I had a baby. Wow, look how cute it is. Oh, no. Being born again. Sorry. Illustration of that. Whatever. <laughs> Mercedes, just let it flow, girl. Um, anyways. <laughs> Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, talking to everybody right most assuredly he is telling us unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God period it doesn't say comma although however but it says I say to you comma unless one is born again comma he cannot see the kingdom of God period have you been born again tonight every message we give should be an opportunity for you to say God I have messed up let me examine. Let me walk into these walls. Let me hear a message online. Let me listen to the radio. Whatever it may be, and Holy Spirit, just speak to me. Because there's an area in my life where I'm falling short again. And that's not from above again. That's not from God again. That's from your old man again. That is from the old human that we used to be. That's the again. But God, I want to be reborn again. I want to come from you. I want to come from above. I want to walk in that. So praise God that every single day we can ask. Every single night, we can, before we rest our head, God, forgive me for anything I did today that was not of you, knowingly and unknowingly. I did not even realize that I may have said something to someone and offended them today. God, forgive me. Show me. Show me the errors of my way, right? Created me. We keep hearing the scripture, scripture recently. Created me a clean heart. Are we really asking that, though, or is it just like, I felt bad, so let me say it. It's not about emotions, and we know that. But sometimes we do walk by emotions, and what's the human in us? But the spirit in us says that if we walk by the spirit, right, we live by it. If we walk by the flesh, you live by the flesh. It's simple as that. It's not that hard. But Jesus is saying, one more time, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Man, God, what am I doing every single day then if I'm living this life pretending and with my excuses being that old person, if everything I'm doing is supposed to be for his kingdom's sake? Am I really living my daily life thinking about you, God? There's going to be evidence of the spirit of God within us. And when that happens, we will produce what we're supposed to walk in, which is those good works. I'm going to read this to you. And this is going to talk about the good works God has called us to do. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the action by which God takes up permanent residence in the body of the believer in Jesus Christ. I'll read that again. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the action by which God takes up permanent residence in the body of a believer 
in Jesus Christ. So I'm saying God has taken residence in me. Ooh, shame the devil. I'm living a life that God wouldn't even want to touch. My thoughts are impure at times. My language, not always clean. My actions, lazy, disobedient, complacent, comfortable. Shame on me. The Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the spirit would come and go from the saints, empowering them for service, for that one-time service, but not necessarily remaining with them. And that can be found in Judges, First Chronicles, Psalms, Ezekiel. If you want them all, I can give them to you. Text me. Jesus revealed to his disciples, though, a new role of the Holy Spirit, of truth that would play in our lives. He says to them in John 14, 17, and you don't have to turn there, he lives with you and, and will be in you. The apostle then wrote, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? I am not my own. If I wake up in the morning and start my day with that, God, this is your life. This is your vessel. Use me. I do occasionally when I'm feeling all holy. Then he says, First Chronicles or Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. For you are brought with a, bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. And that's in everything that we do, even down to my eating. God cares about this physical while I'm here because I'm his vessel to be used by him. Do I get so stuck in what I'm doing physically that I can't be used by God? I've been convicted about twice in the last two years over someone asking me to do a praise dance to do a performance. And I said, no, I'm too fat. I feel sluggish. I don't want them seeing all this jiggling around. And I got convicted. I told God, no, I will not serve you. I will not minister to your people through the gift that you gave me. That was hard for me to swallow. But then I said, but God, you've been talking about my weight and I've been complaining about my weight for how long? The beauty of my God is that he cares all the way down to that. He does. He wants to give me an abundant life and I love Dance ministry. I love it. But you would never know because I've been denying it. I haven't been obedient in it. And my God cares about that too. So do my, does my body need to be right? Yeah, it does. Those are some good works for me. That's part of my calling. Those are some good works to minister and not hide God's truth because of my appearance. It ain't even about me. I used to pray, God, don't even let them see me. Because in the world, they used to see me. And I was ashamed to dance in church because I was that stripper on the streets. And when God said to me, I gave you this. You will use it for my namesake. First time I did a dance, my mom came to a service and I didn't expect her to be there. And it broke her. And it ministered to her. And I couldn't do nothing but cry as I was up there dancing and saw her broken in the congregation. That was God reminding me, I have made you new. That was extra. It wasn't even in my notes. The fact that the believer's body is likened to a temple where the Holy Spirit lives helps us to understand what the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is all about. Those are the good works. That's the purpose that verse 10 was talking about. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit being with us, walking in that. It ain't just walk your life, live your life, work out your own salvation. It's more than that. The Holy Spirit needs to be there first. Otherwise, you're going to walk and stumble and fall and trip and stay down there every now and then or reach out to the wrong person because that's who we are. But when you're indwelling, when you're walking in the spirit of God, man, there's power, right? There's authority. You're reminded of God's love. We're reminded of what he did yesterday. He's going to do it again today. He's going to do it again on Thursday. That's the God that I serve. But because the spirit is reminding me of God's goodness for me and his grace and his mercy. The word temple is used to describe the holy of holies, the inner sanctum in the Old Testament, the tabernacle structure. There, God's presence would appear in a cloud and meet the high priest who came once a year into the holies of holies. Just thinking about that part alone, you met with God once a year? Some of us do. When I get the resurrection and see the the passion of the Christ, I feel like I'm saved all over again. That's horrible. I should feel that every single day that I wake up. I should be reminded of the cross, reminded of Christ, reminded of what he did for me 
and then be like, yes, God, I'm going to feel through your heart, man, stop like that. Every day, I should wake up with a repentant heart and go to bed with one. I'm just being honest because I can do nothing outside of him, nothing outside of him. But that was something that I thought about when I was reading about the, um, the structure and I was describing it. It says, there God's presence would appear in that cloud. On the day of atonement, the high priest brought the blood of a slain animal and sprinkled it on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. We've talked about the Ark. We've talked about the Covenant before. On this special day, God granted forgiveness to the priest and his people. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God that I don't have to wait for pastor <laughs> to go, right, and be up there on my behalf. I thank God that I, that veil that was torn, we sang about that too. Y'all was just speaking my whole message. I love y'all. That veil that was torn, I thank God that I have that direct access because of Jesus Christ. That when I mess up tomorrow, and I'm speaking into existence, I'm just being realistic, y'all. I'm trying not to be, you know. But when something happens, we're immediately let me confess that. Immediately, God, create in me, create in me, create in me. David, the hot mess of David, King David, it blew my mind hearing about how he was God's and he was the man after God's own heart. He was horrible. But I can relate to half, three-fourths of the things that David went through. I didn't murder nobody, though. But the other stuff, you know. But, man, the repentance of David, to recognize his filth, and then I went through this period in life where I was like, I want to dance like David did. And one of my brothers was like, no, sister, you better not. <laughs> I'm like in the private of my own home, you know, get naked and dance like David did. But to know that when you repent of all your filthiness, those rags that you keep picking up, the God that can forgive us again and again, because that comes from above and again and again and again. Only the only forgiveness that I can walk in that truly makes me forgiven is God's. Period accepted, repent, but repentance means what? To turn away from. That's where I think we struggle. We ask for forgiveness, we do good, and then we act like, oh, everything's merry, everything's good, and then something happens again. So the leg up, hey, something happens again, and then what happens? We make an excuse for it. No, repent right, again, right away. I don't care if you repent 17 times a day. Stay with a repentant heart so that you can walk in the spirit. That's the way I look at it, at least. So, Today, there's no Jewish temple, temple in Jerusalem, and the animal sacrifices no longer exist. Thank God we ain't got to kill Nala. Okay, I'm excited about that, our little cat. But we, the believers in Christ, have become the inner sanctum. So God, I am that resting place for the Holy Spirit. Um, in the God and the Holy Spirit, as we have been sanctified and forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ, Ephesians 1, 7. Scripture says that the believer is indwelt spiritually by Christ. So how does the spirit work through me? How does the spirit dwell with me? These are some things that I wrote down that I found online. I kind of reworded my own and found some scripture to match it. So I'm going to give you these last couple points here. One, as we walk and we reflect on these truths, we walk it out by proclaiming the following. This is our examining part, guys. I really want us to think about this. Is this statement true in my life? Not, not sister so-and-so's, not pastor, blah, blah, blahs in my life. Can I say this on a daily? And if you can't, start working it out. That's working out your salvation. Get to a point where you start that change, where you allow the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you to change you. Be more mindful. Be more intentional, right? We do things with excellence, then wake up, and today's going to be an excellent day. <laughs> God, because you dwell in me. Point one. Can we say, I belong to the Lord as an heir of God and fellow heir of Christ, uh, with Christ, excuse me. Romans 8, 15 through 17. I am a member of Christ's universal church through the baptism of the spirit, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 13. I utilize my spiritual gifts, the God-given abilities to serve or for service, to edify the church and serve the Lord for his glory. Glory. Remember I said earlier, you know, complacency, being comfortable, being lazy, Times are getting worse, and we know it, but we can't keep just saying it. What actions are we taking? And that looks different for every single one of us, church. We're all called to make disciples, period. We're all called to share the gospel, period. However that looks to you, ask God. What are the gifts that you've given me, God, and how can I utilize those gifts? Gift of mercy is a beautiful gift. Hmm, I fall short. But 
I have the gift of gab, so I like talking about my testimony. <laughs> yeah, no. But I fall short in certain gifts because they're not my gifts. But I love that we have found out what our gifts are. And if you don't know, please talk to us so that we can get that going again because we need to know these gifts. We were called with a purpose, not to come to church, not to sing together, not to be cool, not to be a family. We're called to go after those that are lost, period. And all of us are given an opportunity every single day. We just have to look for those opportunities and ask God, Holy Spirit, you're here, you're with me, I am your resting place, I am your vessel. How do you want to choose and how do you want to use me today? And then let those gifts come out. So can I say that I utilize my spiritual gifts to edify the church and serve the Lord for his glory? 1 Corinthians 12, 11. I strive to understand and apply the scripture to my life daily. Or do we just say, I read it, but I don't understand it. None of us do. <laughs> but it's the Holy Spirit that does all that for us. Are we intentional with asking God, help me to understand and apply your word daily? Jesus talks and he talks in his parables and he's so simple. We overcomplicate it. That's the truth of it. We try to get too spiritual at times. That's the truth of it too. I can do nothing outside of God. God, let me just shut my mouth. You talk to me. And then when it's time to open it, God, it just goes, and it's you. If it's not you, God, then stop letting me talk. I've prayed that before. I prayed it recently because Shiloh wants to get everybody saved. God, let it be you. Let it be you. It's a humbling experience, but it's necessary. I serve to maintain a healthy prayer life and believe, or strive, excuse me. I strive to maintain a healthy life, um, prayer life, and believe that the Holy Spirit intercedes for me in prayer. Do we believe that? Is that something that we're going after? I want a healthy prayer life. Romans 8, 26 to 27. In the last two, I depend on the Holy Spirit to empower me to live for Christ in order to do his will. Galatians 5, 16. And for the Holy Spirit to lead me in paths of righteousness. Do I depend on the Holy Spirit to empower me for righteousness? It's obtainable. Holiness, it's obtainable. God wouldn't have told us that if it wasn't. But what are we doing to obtain that holiness, that righteousness of Christ? What are we doing to, sit, to say, I can reside in the heavenly places with Jesus Christ because he was, died for me and resurrected? What are we doing to walk in that? And lastly, there is evidence in my daily life of the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> I thought that was the last one that was pretty good just because of the simple fact that we all fall short of walking in the fruit of the Spirit. All nine of them sometimes. And as we stand tonight, I want this last truth to really hit home to us. And I'm going to say it for our online viewers first. Um, and then we're going to close down and we're going to continue here. Can we say, church, family online, I know my sin grieves the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 4.30. And I am convicted to the point of confession and repentance. 1 John 1.9. As we close out tonight and for our online viewers, I do pray that the word tonight encouraged you. If nothing else, I do pray, since you guys are not with us, you can't be with us tonight on a Wednesday night, those that are watching from near and far. I do pray that as you hear God's word come across, you don't let distance, you don't let the fact that you're not present stop you from really seeking after God. My prayer tonight truly is for our at-home people, or wherever you're watching from, is that you allow the Holy Spirit in your home, in your workplace, in the car, at the park with your dog. I don't care where you are that you allow the Holy Spirit to really help you to examine your heart tonight. So until we see you guys again, until you guys ch um, check in with us again, I'm going to say good night to, uh, to our Holy Spirit viewers. To the viewers online, let the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. And to us here.